pleasant day to everyone. My name is Sandy May B. Tahil, the first reporter for Group 6. And our topic is all about the art in Asia in Lesson 11. So, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify key influences to Chinese art. Second, identify key characteristics of Japanese art. Third, compare and contrast Chinese art and Japanese art artworks. Fourth, trace the development of Philippine art. Fifth, discuss the concept of okir. And lastly, explain how art can be a key element in the formation of a society's culture. So basically, we will discuss the three countries which are the Japan, China, and the Philippines. So, this is only just an introduction of the art in Asia. So, when ancient civilization in Asia flourished, trade became a very important activity. So, in the process of establishing trading relationships among Asian countries, they started sharing their cultures and belief systems. So, trade, trading is one of the key or because of the trade, they can influence their, their artworks or their cultures and believe to other countries. So, Asia is home to the world's earliest civilizations. Its cultures have many practices that have been integral to societies for centuries, such as agriculture, city planning, and religion, and also in art. So China, being one of the oldest civilization in Asia, has a rich history when it comes to culture and arts. So, the Yellow River and Yangtze civilization arose millennia before the Shang, with thousands of years of continuous history. China is among the world's oldest civilization and is regarded as one of the cradles of civilization. And... Most of their cultural and even religious beliefs and practices are represented through different artwork. So that is how the China give a big contribution around the world when it comes in artworks. So next is Japan was essentially influenced by China in terms of art so the so the japan throughout his its history japanese art has relied heavily on forms and techniques borrowed from china so that is how china is very influential with the japanese art so rare examples of Wall painting in the Golden Hall at Yurijinir Nara in the early 18th century were based on China's Horyoji sculpture. So, later on, the they opened themselves to the Western world, allowing for the fusion of East and West. So, both China and Japanese artworks are concrete manifestation of their cultural identity as a people. So, Philippine art was a product of several periods in history spanning from pre-colonial period to the contemporary, contemporary arts. So, the contemporary Philippine art is the art produced in the present period of time. So, the art of the Philippines has been influenced by almost all spheres of the globe. So, it had the taste of Renaissance, Baroque, and modern periods through the colonizer who arrived in the country. So, this is actually just an uh, introduction to the arts in Asia. And the next 
more reporter will discuss further about the China, Japan, and Philippines in terms of art. So that's all. Thank you. Chinese art, art in Asia. So what is Chinese art? This Chinese art history encompasses all the visual arts originating in China and produced by the Chinese cultures and artists. So China has been at the leading edge of development, especially in terms of cultural development. So inhabitants of China in the past were able to produce primitive artisan works. Chinese art has varied throughout its ancient history, divided into periods by the ruling dynasties of China and changing technology. So the Chinese during the Zhou dynasty was under the feudal kind of social system. It was a parallel period with a crisis of golden age, a period when culture, particularly art, has flourished tremendously. So during this period, Metal works benefiting the royal family were produced in abundance. So this Chinese art and painting have been influenced by Chinese philosophies of Buddhism, Confucianism, and particularly Taoism, so which seeks to show a sense of harmony between humans and the larger world. So this allows painters to work their personal feelings and emotions into how they represent a landscape. So next is Confucianism in Chinese art. So this Confucianism is one of the most influential religious philosophies in the history of China, which laid the foundation for much of Chinese culture. So it is concerned with inner virtue, morality, and respect for the community and its values. So these principles became evident in most artworks depicting everyday life and how these social interactions come to play. So Confucianism is an ancient Chinese belief system which focuses on the importance of personal ethics and morality. This Confucianism encouraged the government to give jobs and educate people, society, and even traditional Chinese culture. So for Confucius, since ritual was essential in bringing about social harmony, and since the arts were seen as an important component of ritual, the arts too were seen as instrument in actualizing two interrelated social ends, so self-cultivation and social harmony. Chinese have interactions with Western missionaries who brought certain Indian influences to China. For several centuries, Indian models served as an inspiration to many Chinese artists. However, in the 6th century, Chinese artists began creating art that reflected their own culture. Paintings usually depicted magical places and realms that were born out of sheer imagination while still infusing Chinese characters that defined their culture. Most paintings were done in monumental styles wherein rocks and mountains served as a barrier that made the viewer distracted initially from the main subject of the work. As you can see on the picture presented on this slide, there are Chinese characters written on the upper right corner of the painting. The infusion of Chinese characters on their painting is due to their high valuation of calligraphy. In fact, the real arts of merit in China were calligraphy and painting. The artwork itself also features mountains, river, waterfall, and some presence of humanity. As you can see on the bottom of the mountain, there is some sort of village. Here are a few more examples of Chinese paintings. One can easily identify a Chinese painting by its calligraphy or the infusion of Chinese characters and mainly because of the subject. The most common subject of a Chinese painting is about landscape, particularly mountains and waters. On the pictures presented, the subject of the paintings are all about landscape. And they all have Chinese calligraphy, although in the first picture it can be barely seen, but there are Chinese characters written in red ink. Landscape painting had been around as long as artists had, but the genre really took off during the Tang Dynasty when artists became much more concerned with humanity's place in nature. Typically, small human figures guide the viewer through a panoramic landscape of mountains and rivers in Tang paintings. It should be no surprise that mountains and water dominated landscape painting as the very word in Chinese for landscape is Shan Shui, which consists of two characters 
Shan meaning mountains and Sway meaning water. The second picture poet on the mountain top is an example of Tang painting where the subject is about landscape and it also has human presence where there is a small human figure on the top of the mountain. You can fairly observe on their paintings that colors were limited in use, either everything in various shades of single color or two colors combined, usually blues and greens. Aside from being known for their landscape paintings, the Chinese were the masters of pottery and ceramics. They produced everything from heavy and functional storage jars to exquisitely decorated bowls in the most delicate of porcelain from vases to garden tools, teapots, etc. Porcelain is one of the commonly used items to make decorative ornaments and the such in Chinese pottery. Porcelain is a kind of ceramics made from kaolin at high temperature. The earliest ceramics in China appeared in the Shang dynasty, and the production of ceramics laid the foundation for the invention of porcelain. The history of Chinese porcelain can be traced back to the Han dynasty. In the Tang dynasty, porcelain was divided into celadon and white porcelain. In the Song Dynasty, Jing Tutsun was selected as the Royal Porcelain Production Center and began to produce blue and white porcelain. Some artifacts from excavation sites show intricate works of the Chinese in these porcelain vases. The determinable thing about Chinese artwork that makes them unique in arts of Asia is their core theme which is in accordance to Confucianism and nature. They believe that man is an integral part of nature, ensuring that there is a certain balance in it. But part of their culture is emphasizing a form of social life, giving importance to communities and interactions among people. In short, they promote Confucianism. Furthermore, everyday activities, conflict and brutality, death and nature are also common underlying themes in Chinese artworks. It should also be mentioned that Chinese art has a lot of symbolism. Art becomes a vehicle for the artist to express his perception of the world around him. Good day everyone, I am Cindy Suliva. Japanese art. It includes ancient pottery, sculpture, ink painting and calligraphy on silk and paper, Okiyo-e paintings and woodblock prints, ceramics, origami, and more recently manga and anime. And these are the different art styles and media of Japanese art. Furthermore, the art styles mentioned covers their old arts up until the present day. Japanese art has a long history as much as the culture of the country of the rising sun, which starts from the beginning of human settlements in about 10,000 BC to the present. Japan has been subject to sudden invasions of new and alien ideas. Sometimes, ang mga subject nila sa ilang art known as alien ideas because of their uh, geographical and cultural characteristics that their country has almost always been a world unto itself. Meaning, ang ilang art with that idea has a special qualities that it does not share with other, and so it should be understood differently from those other things. Art in Japan has undergone a series of transition and periodization. Whether art has a continuous flow of artworks through time and space in two groupings. Diba sa Japan, daghan kay mga periods like the early Japan, Kamakura period, Muromachi period, and so on. So, nagakontinue ang flow sa ilang art in the form of periodization. And it is said that their country is isolated sa una because in the 17th to the 19th century, they saw Japan adopting a policy that isolated the whole country for the outside world. And this long period of national isolation was called Sakuku. But after the end of isolation on 1853, they started to embrace Western influences and modernization. Next, from the use of Japanese materials, 
their local and indigenous materials, it is evident na through that nag-recreate silag arts which nai influence sa western subject and some focal points. And uh, if mag-base ta sa artifacts, take note that it has an evident influence of Chinese and Korean, such as ceramic figures. Example is karang nasta the picture. Um, tawag is Haniwa, Haniwa House. And the second picture is Haniwa, specifically known as Haniwa Warrior. Though it has different forms, but it have a same materials use, which is clay. And the book said its purpose is unknown, but based on my research, it is for ritual purposes for the dead. Next is ornaments, as well na influensya ni siya sa China and Korea. Familiar mo tayong mga sugat, diba? Commonly, makita na to ni sa China. And the second picture are designs used for decoration sa mga um, ceramics or figurines. Lastly, we have Shintoism. It is the native religion of Japan. And although this religion subscribes to beliefs such as being one of with nature and notion of the existence of gods, Shinto gods known as Kami. And if na ay mabatay na tao, they believe na po transfer ilahang spirits sa wind, rain, sun, trees, and rivers. But on the contrary, even though native religion na nila, still it do not use art to communicate their beliefs. However, the time Japan established trading relations to China, and Chinese are not only trading goods, but they also influence Japan with their religious belief and practices. And maon in the time, Buddhism become part of Japanese culture. And Japan started to produce artworks such as images, uh, sculptures of Buddha. And Buddhist temples are found in any places of Japan. Now, art, in essence, became an expression para mag-worship for the Japanese people. As previously stated, Japan and China had a long-standing relationship. Aside from Buddhism, China also influenced Japanese painting. After the 14th century, Japan isolated itself from the rest of the world, effectively allowing their culture to flourish. The Japanese painting style leaned toward abstraction and naturalistic handling. In essence, the artist is given complete freedom over his work, which allows for a greater spontaneity and individuality. Many artists created artworks based on individual portraits, natural elements, and scenes from everyday life. Despite being influenced by the Chinese, the Japanese adopted a more minimalist approach to their paintings. This is in stark contrast to the Chinese extravagant and sometimes over-the-top designs. The Japanese also created a type of painting known as Okiyo-e. Okiyo-e is a type of Japanese woodblock printing and painting that dates back to the 17th century. This new art style deviated from the traditional hyper-realistic artwork that many artists aspired to at that time. These designs were minimalistic, created with a simple line work, and then expertly finished with bold colors. Okiyo-e focuses on a single subject and uses purposely line work and colors to highlight it against a natural and beautiful background. Though there are numerous variations, these specific components define it and distinguish it from other types of design. Philippine Art the art of the Philippines refers to the works of art that have developed and accumulated in the Philippines from the beginning of, of civilization in the country up to the present era. Accumulation of these works in museums all over the country reflects the culture of the Philippine society and the wide range of cultural influ influences for countries that happen to interact with its people.
It also considers how other countries' culture influenced local arts that resulted in Filipino artworks as it is known today. Throughout Philippine history, spanning from the pre-colonial period to the contemporary periods, different art forms have emerged in the Philippines' art scene. Before the colonizers came to the Philippines, ethnic minorities have used art not only for daily activities but also for religious rituals and practices. Most art forms used by ethnic communi communities include pottery, weaving, carving, and the use of metalwork and jewelry. Pottery. Pottery is to be one of the earliest art forms used by Filipino people. Clay pots were discovered which dated as early as 710 BCE in Masbate. The most convenient way to classify and study thousands of pre-Hispanic pottery is to classify them according to shape, method of decoration, and type of design on the surface. Shape is the description of the vessel's body, the forms its mouth, the thickness of its lips, or the presence of ears, spouts, and legs attached, attached to its body. Method of decoration is the manner by which designs are applied on the body's surface. Decorative designs are either impressed or incised. Eventually, pottery produce items that are of practical value for the early Filipinos, such as pots for cooking and large vases for storing. One of the most prominent artifacts related to pottery is the Manunggal jar found in Palawan. This jar is a representation of the early Filipinos' religious belief and practices. The Manunggal jar is widely acknowledged to be one of the finest Philippine pre-colonial artworks ever produced and is considered a masterpiece. Manunggal jar also signifies the belief of ancient Filipinos in life after death. The Manunggal jar shows that the Filipinos' maritime culture is paramount that it reflected its ancestors' religious beliefs. The fine line and intricate designs of the Manunggal jar reflect the artistry of early Filipinos. The Manunggal jar measures 51.5 cm wide and 66.5 in height. On top of the cover is a boat with two humans figures that represent souls and on a journey to the afterlife. A pattern still encountered in burial practices among the indigenous people in southern Philippines. The faces of the figures and on the prow of the boat have eyes and mouth rendered in the same style as the other artifacts of Southeast Asia of that period. Next is weaving. Weaving was also one of the earliest forms of art expressions in the Cordilleras. They are known for their colorful woven cloth, which is also have both religious and practical value. They are known Tiboli people from Mindanao are also known for their woven abaca cloth called Tinalak. They used this particular cloth to make uh, ornaments ornaments which also represent, represent their belief through symbols. One example is the image of frog which is their representation for fertility. Wood carving in the Philippines is a tradition dating back to pre-colonial times. Native Filipinos curve boats, plows, arrows, spears, and other essential items in creating ornamental patterns for the use of the tribal hierarchy and, the and to celebrate special occasions. Wood carvings from Palawan also depict animals like birds which are 
representations of the religious belief. According to local stories, the birds serve as the messengers of the people to the heavens and vice versa. In Mindanao, the Tausug and Maranao people are known for their ochre, which are designs applied to their wood carvings. Their common subjects include the Sarimanok, Naga, and the Paco, Rab and the Paco Rabung. Each subject is a representation for a certain theme or motif, but generally these symbols depict their belief as a people. And the last forms used by ethnic communities is jewelry. Jewelry was used as amulets for protection to drive away evil spirits. Eventually, some minority groups from the Cordilleras and Cotabato utilized jewelry as ornament in, in ornaments integrated in their clothing. Shells were used for accessories, bracelets, and pendants. A piece of cone shell, presumably an earring, is an example of ancient jewelry. It was discovered in Duyong Cave in Palawan. Shells, animals, bones, and small stones were the earliest adornments. When the Spaniards discovered the Philippines during the 16th century, they introduced their religion to the local people. Aside from acquiring resources, they had a goal to replace the existing indigenous cultural practices and beliefs of the early Filipinos. So, art was used by the Spaniards to propagate, propagate their Christian faith just like Western Europe at one point became the sole patron of the art. Art became one of the avenues for Filipino patriots and nationalists. So, this is the famous, most famous works that express Filipino nationalism. The Lunas Polarium. This is large-scale academic painting garnered a gold medal and signified that the reformists could come at par with their European counterparts. After World War II, the Philippines saw itself as an independent state transitioning into the formation of its national identity. So, in addition, a debate emerged on whether art should be done as proletarian art or arts of sake. The 1960s proved to be a period of modernism and dynamism, with a lot of styles techniques, and methods emerging. During the Marcos administration, there is a, Filip there is a Philippines mostly sa mga artworks naga reflect sa political, social, and economic situation.